you know the drill. Can't tell you about the secret stuff I'm working on at the time or show my daily activities. So today, again, I'm making a vlog just answering some questions you guys have asked. And in the next week or so, I will hopefully come to a point where I can reveal the secrets. Oh my god, the secrets. Anyways, the question today comes from uh, Yasao Kenshi, who says, Since you suffered from burnout, how do you deal with thoughts like, I have to get that done, I can't take a break, people are expecting stuff from me. It happens often to me and I feel guilty because I don't draw or paint fast enough. Sometimes it takes me weeks, if not months, to finish artworks. I owe people. It keeps putting pressure on me, stresses me out, and in the end, I only work on things for other people, barely have any time for private drawings, and often quite... Well, it burns me out. <clears throat> That's a very good question. I feel like burnout is is like a, a tension wire, right? So in this sort of job, the sad reality is you have to really teeter on the edge of burnout far too often because it's really hard to be a working artist. That's the truth. That's the sad truth. To find clients, to to build a name for yourself or, or work enough to earn enough of a reputation to be able to build enough to bet demand, to, to charge enough for your supply so that you make enough money for your time. But there's a long time there where you're working really hard for not much money. And then finally, when you make enough money, like at the moment, I'm in a place where I'm, there's a lot of pressure to make this last, to keep it going up rather than being okay with a plateau or even going down. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of pressure there, therefore you take on more work, even though you've done all the work to get there, you have to build it up and keep stepping it up so that you can strike the iron while it's hot, so to speak. Um, and the reality is, I, like, I, I believe that it might be a year or five years, but at some stage I'm going to be going downhill. At the moment I feel like I'm doing, doing things pretty well and all that stuff, but we're very conscious that this won't last forever and we need it provide for the future. In answer to your question, the burnout thing, it's like a tension wire. And the fact is you can't have the loose wire. You have to pull it and you have to stretch it. And sometimes I'm really, I'm really into analogies and metaphors. Like, do you, are you getting that? <laughs> a lot of these videos where I'm like just Q and A'ing, I'm really into just like imagery examples, but I'm a visual thinker. So this stuff really makes sense to me emotionally. Um, the fact is you have to pull your tension wire, uh, you have to stretch yourself to a point where you're stretched and it's difficult and you have to sort of fluctuate between tense, difficult, I can't take this for too long, stretched, and I'm having a break, I'm still working hard, keeping things going, and every now and then come in, totally loosen up before you come in and stretch again. So that's the general dynamic that I think most people who are creative professionals totally understand. And if you're trying to be a creative professional, uh, it can be very difficult because you might ask yourself, am I not stretching enough? But you're actually stretching too much, maybe. Or you might um, just not be stretching enough and maybe emotionally not quite up to that yet. And you need to sort of build your own emotional capacity to stretch yourself. It's a very, very, very difficult, bizarre sort of thing. But as far as burnout in dealing with pressures and questions like, how do you get it done? I can't take a break. People are expecting stuff from me. Uh, I try not to sit in that territory and I think that's the answer, right? So you need to constantly stretch yourself. Yeah, you have deadlines. Uh, you People are expecting stuff from you and you can't rest. But you can create bursts and patterns of something a little more sustainable. It's not healthy or sustainable to do this in, in a long-term or unrested capacity. Uh, and I'm guilty of doing that from time to time. I'm actually doing it right now. But I also make sure I have a light at the end of the tunnel. I have a couple of weeks from now when I'm like, okay, I'm going to take a long weekend. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to reward myself for having gotten through the marathon and sprinted in the last leg, right? And I think that's just sort of how I, I see it. I see it as a marathon for much of what I'm doing. You just chug along. You get going. You get to the weekends and you give yourself the week. My weekends are sacred. That's why there's not many vlogs on weekends anymore because I get to the weekend and I've stretched myself all week and I unwind with my family. I cuddle with my children and spend time with my wife. That is my relax, right? Um, but there are, in, in general, there are, there's a lot of time where you're constantly just generally pull, pulling yourself, pushing yourself, <laughs> stretching yourself, whatever the freaking metaphor is. Um, and then there is usually towards the end or towards this sort of 
crescendo stage, a place where you're sprinting after having marathoned. And that's tough. That's really hard. And that's where, in my experience, or for me personally, you just push through it and uh, keep positive and have a silver lining and a light at the end of the tunnel, which for me is usually an added break, uh, the reward at the end, and give yourself something nice. You know, sometimes it might, for me, it might be going out and having sushi, which is my happy place. Uh, it might, I, I love beers, so I love like really different craft beers. So if I've like worked really hard for a couple of weeks and it's weekend time, I'll have like two or three nice craft beers, spend time with my family and I'll just really enjoy unwinding. So I think that's the key is you really just find the things that you love that just help your help like sometimes I get so stressed and so tense with those questions that you mentioned in, in your question that I feel physically tight in my chest and when I feel that I recognize I can't stay there so I stop whatever I'm doing if I need to finish early in the day if I need to go out and literally meditate for 10 minutes I will do that I will find something that I can just relax and detach bring the wire back in loosen it up keep going back to that metaphor but you get what, you get what I mean. It's really a, it's a balancing act, and it's it's something that takes a lot of figuring out while you're going on while you're going on with it. Because as as you sort of mentioned, I did suffer from burnout, but that was a point where I stretched and I didn't break, and the wire snapped, and that's what a, pe a lot of people refer to as burnout. Um, but you really like there are different forms of burnout and it can be that you've just you're stretching for so hard and so long that you're getting weaker and you're not able to pull your wire or stretch yourself and then you just you just become weak and you can't bring yourself up to stretching yourself again or it could just be a gradual thing or something that becomes part of the monotonous or the constant so i don't i don't think there's one kind of burned out i don't think it's black and white like that um, but I do think that having mechanisms to anchor yourself to your happy place, your harmony, and giving yourself rewards are really, really crucial to making something long-term. Because the fact is, like, aside from that moment of burnout where I really neglected myself, and that was a year and a half ago now, um, in general, I, I, I actually can't live in a place where I'm not stretching myself. If I take a break for two weeks, by the end of those two weeks, I feel just as stressed and stressed and tense because I'm not working, <laughs> you know? So I, I most often live in a place where I'm really, really stretching myself and challenging myself. And I thrive in that place. And I think that's just another thing to consider. If you're trying to be a creative professional, if you don't thrive in that place in general, or if it makes you unhappy, maybe it's something to reconsider because creative professionalism isn't for everyone. I believe creativity is for everyone, but whether that can fit in the context of a professional workflow is subjective and and depends on who's going through it and if they can handle that emotionally and if it brings them happiness in the end anyways that was a very all over the place answer i hope it's given you some insight or some help if that's something you struggle with or have questions about or maybe were curious as to how i manage it but uh, that's just my my mental state i think Mrs. Jazza gave me another visual metaphor that i use from time to time which is that of horses she loves horses um where after my burnout moment, the snapped wire, so to speak, I went through this stage where I was really struggling to, when I was recovering, to come back to work because it, it was almost like a post-traumatic stress feeling where like, as soon as I started to feel like, oh, now I have to finish something by the end of the day or now I have to, then I just immediately felt, felt that tension and fear and just felt like shutting off. Um, <clears throat> and she helped me understand that I was being like a racehorse. I was I was sprinting constantly and every day, holding that tension. Like if I was working, I had to be fully stretched. That was my understanding emotionally. Uh, and she was essentially saying, you're being a racehorse all the time. You need to be a plodding workhorse more of the time to get to the end of the day and be okay with not finishing, just finishing where you're at and coming back the next day and finishing the piece off or um, not feeling the tension of what you're supposed to get done, but just focusing on what you're doing currently and getting that done piece by piece and not worrying about it because it's so much of it comes down to your mental state and deciding what to see. And if you're looking at the whole picture and getting stressed about what you need to get done, it, it's really difficult to start. But if you're just thinking, I'm just going to work on this piece of it, and if I finish that, I'll work on this piece of it. But not even thinking further ahead than that. Just focusing on what you can do and trying to enjoy it 
and then that makes it doable. And that analogy really helped me. The racehorse and workhorse balance. Because sometimes you need a sprint, but like the, the wire thing, god damn, me and my friggin' <laughs> metaphors and analogies. You can't stay fully stretched all the time, but you sort of got to fluctuate between a, a, a semi-stretched and relaxed place to a, a stretched place, and that's that's generally how, as a creative professional, things work best, in my experience. Anyways, that was a very long answer. Hope it's been helpful and interesting to you guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully I can reveal secrets to you all soon. Otherwise, till then, I guess I'll just keep answering questions. <laughs> I'll see you later.